Hello my great friends, welcome back to our scripture union value series on moral purity. This is episode number four and I'm glad to know that you are super glued right there. I'm proud of you. I hope you are ready with your notebook and a B-I-B-L-E. Today we will be learning that purity results in no regrets. Purity results in no regrets. Now, some time back, a friend of mine asked me how I would describe a butterfly. Do you know what insect it was before it became a butterfly? Mm, yes, a worm or a caterpillar. Do you remember from your science class what that process is called? Photosynthesis? <laughs> no, metamorphosis. That's right. Just before the butterfly comes out of the cocoon, it struggles a long time. And this struggle helps it develop strength to live and fly. Finally, when the butterfly is strong enough, the cocoon cracks and opens and out comes the butterfly. A story is told of a boy who saw a metamorphosing butterfly trying to emerge from the cocoon. The boy observed it wiggling and struggling so it looked so helpless. He felt pity for it and decided to help it. Quickly, he cracked the cocoon, setting the butterfly free. He watched excitedly, expecting the butterfly to spread out its new wings and begin to fly. But instead, after a few violent wiggles, it laid still and died. But why did the butterfly die? Boys and girls, there is time for everything. In, in this case, the right time for the butterfly to come out of the cocoon is only after it has become strong through struggling. But the boy rushed it, and so the butterfly died. Can anyone guess why I'm telling you this story? Well, from the look of your faces, it seems it's a tight guess. Sometimes young people get impatient and want to rush the process of developing long life love. Of course, I'm speaking of rushing into experience of sex. For those who choose to rush ahead, the results are often as disastrous as it was for the butterfly. For sure, there will be irreversible damage, damage that you will eventually deeply regret. And our values promise for this week declares a choice to experience peace rather than painful regret in the future. Are you ready to read with me? All right, let's go. I will wait for God's timing for sex because it has no regrets. Let's do it one more time before we dig into the story. I will wait for God's timing for sex because it has no regrets. Boys and girls, when is God's timing for sex? Yes, after someone is married. All right, let us repeat our values promise one more time. I will wait for God's timing for sex because it has no regrets. Refusing to obey God leads to painful consequences. Now let's listen to this story. 
Jennifer grew up in a big family in the village. By primary five, both of her parents died from AIDS. An auntie agreed to bring Jennifer to live with her in town. Jennifer did well in her studies. Deep inside Jennifer, she wished she had someone special who loved her. Girls, do you understand? She wished she had a boyfriend, like some of her friends at school. One day, she met a young man, and it seemed just like love at first sight. About a month later, he told her he loved her and wanted her to prove her love for him by having sex with him. Now, why you know that's not right? She knew it was wrong, especially since she was only in primary six. Wrong timing. But she so much wanted to be loved that she agreed. That was the last time she saw him. Jennifer was devastated, especially when she found out that she was pregnant. Her auntie, of course, was angry at her. But because Jennifer was good in school, she agreed to take care of the baby so that she could return to school. So, she started primary six again the following year. But everyone knew what she had done, what had happened to her, and many kept reminding her of the mistakes she had done. Feelings of loneliness, failure, just seemed to grow every day in Jennifer's life. Towards the end of primary six, it happened again. This time, she was sure that this boy truly loved her. Before long, they engaged in sex. She could hardly believe it when she found out she was pregnant again. The guy offered to pay for her abortion so that she could continue with her studies. Once again, she knew it was the wrong thing to do to kill the unborn baby. What would you have done at this point if you were Jennifer? But it just seemed there was nothing else she could do. So she had an abortion. However, she was left with too much pain and eventually found out that it affected her uterus, which meant she might not be able to have any more children. When the boy learned that, he left her saying that he wanted to have children and so he couldn't marry her. She was dumped. Jennifer simply could not cope up anymore. She abandoned her auntie and the baby and went to live with a cousin in a village where no one knew about her. Not even her cousin knew all that had happened. How she hated herself for her bad decisions. Her life overflowed with regrets. If only Jennifer followed our values promise that we've just learned today, things would be different. Boys and girls, let's repeat our values promise one more time together. I will wait for God's timing for sex because it has no regrets.
this you need to remember. Some consequences are irreversible. There, in our new village, Jennifer worked hard in the garden to earn enough money to live. So she tried so hard to forget the past, but it was always in her mind. Oh, my two babies, one abandoned and the other killed. Oh, I'll never get any more children. Oh, I've dropped out of school. I was abandoned by two men whom I thought they really loved me. And so much pain was happening in her life. Loneliness, failure, and regret seem to be our best friends every day. One day, her cousin offered to introduce her to another man. <laughs> Jennifer was hesitant because of what she had gone through, but she was desperate. She needed someone to take care of her. She wanted someone to love her, so she agreed. However, this time, she was determined not to have sex until after she was married. And that's why boys and girls, we are asking you to wait, wait, wait for God's timing. And God's timing is in marriage. So she didn't tell him about her past for fear that it would end the relationship. Eventually, he asked her if she would marry him, and she agreed. Finally, my friend Jennifer was truly married and would be loved for the rest of her life. But even then, her past continued to haunt her, especially when two years went by and she didn't get pregnant. I'm sure you remember why she couldn't get pregnant. Inwardly, she knew why, but she didn't tell anyone. However, almost always happens, someone found out and told her husband about her two previous pregnancies and her abortion. Of course, he was furious that she had not told him all the things. Boys, what would you do if that was your wife? He was so hungry and beat her up and sent her away, saying he never wanted to see her again. What a sad, real story this is. Maybe you are thinking that that will never happen to you. But sometimes even the worst could happen if you refuse to follow God's instructions for your life. How different Jennifer's story could have been if she had followed our values promise. I hope that you will determine today that you will wait for God's perfect time for sex, which is marriage, so that you will not be plagued by regret. Let us now repeat our various promise one more time and say it like you really mean it. Let's go. I will wait for God's timing for sex because it has no regrets. Very good. Now here are some of the things I need you to go with at the end of this class. What are some of the regrets that Jennifer lived with? Oh yes, primary, the primary school dropout, heartbroken three times, mm -hmm. abandoned a baby, that's right, killed another one. Yes, and not 
being able to give birth to any more children. And the list continues. What might Jennifer's life have been if she had followed our values promise? The story would be different, I know. The story would be different. And I, I pray that you would be completely different from Jennifer's story that we've just heard today. I remember a time when I was in primary six and my friends started pairing up boy and girl relationship. They had nicknamed me computer and the head girl really had feelings special about me and so I'd say she loved me and I was always the first in class and really good in math and so many things. Sometimes she could come in our discussion groups and you're preparing for PLE and she started rolling her eyes. You know how girls you do those things to me and I kept ignoring. I knew it was a potential fire for me to handle. Remember my dad told me there is AIDS. If you play around, you'll get it and it's a, it, many people are dying. So I got busy with my work and silenced my friends never to engage me in their conversations, in their garbage. That wasn't the reason I went to school. I wrote a note and a card to ask God to keep me away from the immorality. This kept me away from all sexual relationships until university that at that time I found a beautiful lady whom I had left at high school and I married her. Now it's coming to three years and that's the best time we can engage into sex. Sex in marriage honors God and that's the best timing. Now let me speak to you as your big brother. Girls, don't just allow boys and young men play with your life. You are precious to be wasted. And the boys, see these girls as your real sisters. Stand up to protect them rather than destroying them. Amen? Amen. Now, from the Bible, let us read something, some warning that comes from God about how we should live our lives. In the book of Galatians, chapter 6, verse 7 to 8a, it says, Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. The one who sows to please his sinful nature, from that nature will reap destruction. You're thinking, what does God command us not to do? Don't be deceived. What truth about God does this verse tell us? God cannot be mocked. What does mocked mean? It means to be laughed at, tricked, fooled, deceived. What does this verse say about people? Mm -hmm. Yes, we reap what we sow. You never plant beans and harvest maize. You reap what you sow. We will experience the consequences of what we choose to do just like we heard from Jennifer. If you go against God's instruction and sin, what will be the results? Destruction, right? According to this verse, can you ever get away with your sin or disobey without experiencing painful consequences? Absolutely no! For those of you who wish to live a life 
free from painful regrets, make up your mind today. Now that you will be patient, that you will wait and follow God's wise and good instructions regarding sex because you are ready to make up your mind and follow our values promise of waiting for God's timing for sex because it has no regrets, stand up and join my friends in the purity song. That was really, really interesting. Purity is right. Purity is good. It's good for us to wait and the right time we will enjoy all these things. Now it's time for us to talk to God as we end our fourth episode. You ready to talk to God? There we go. Dear God, all of your commands are made in wisdom and love. Please help me to obey you by waiting until marriage for sex so that I will avoid long life regrets. In Jesus' name I have prayed. Amen. That was great. I look forward to be on your wedding day. Now, as we end today's episode, I'm looking forward to meet you in the next episode. So have a great day. See you!